Okay, today I'm going to be making a couple of rigs up and they will show you what I use for 99% of my fishing. Um, uh, I'm also going to show you a few fish that I've caught and that will be stills as well as short videos uh, of the fish, uh, UK and uh, French uh, from the bottom and from surface fishing as well. I'm also going to be showing you what uh, equipment I use, rods, reels, and uh, I'm going to go through that with you um, so you can see what I, I tend to use. I use um, uh, a particularly good line that I think is probably one of the best. Um, I know Corda um, and a lot of other companies make decent line, but I thought I've just found Fox to be the best line that I can possibly afford, and that's what I tend to do with most of my equipment. Uh, it's the best that I can afford, or the best that I think um, will do the job that it's supposed to be doing. Um, so, on my lighter setup, um, I use this uh, 13 pound soft steel uh, from um, uh, from Fox. Uh, usually, um, dark or light doesn't really matter to me. Uh, they both do a really good job. I used to use on my uh, big setup 16 pound soft steel. Um, this is also a pretty good line. Um, I like it a lot. Good camouflage properties on the bottom. Um, you can see it quite a bit through the water, so I've kind of stepped away from that a little bit. And on my my big setup now, I use 23 pound Exocet in Trans Khaki. I find it super for casting, brilliant abrasion resistance. I've not had this come off uh, or, or go in snags or anything like that it's a fantastic line recommend it um, I don't use um, one make of stuff I don't use all Fox I don't use all Nash I don't use all all Corda I use different stuff for um, different parts of the jobs that they are designed for and what I think do the best on that job uh, you sure you'll probably see that as we go along I'll take you out now and I'll show you the rods so this is my light setup Okay, this is what I use for float fishing or stalking or maybe even just a, a quick day session. Uh, these are S Lite 10 foot 2 and 3 quarters with uh, the super bait runners from Shimano uh, in 10,000. And this is my normal setup. Um, these are S Lite's 12 foot and these are. Uh, the SL IVEs um, and I'm, I've got them with the CI4 14,000 from Shimano um, and I've put uh, washers in these, carbon fibre washers in these to make the drag like a few clicks, it's fantastic all of these are the best that I can afford and I think they do a fantastic job for what I, what I need them to do This is how I set up my my Ronnie spinner rigs, um, whatever you want to call them. Um, it's not the same as everybody else, um, but I'll show you what I use and we'll go from there. Okay, so these uh, are quarter hooks. I'm not affiliated with any any brand. I you try to use the best I can. Um, very good hooks. Um, do have to protect the the point though. Um, Ridge Monkey hooks, brilliant hooks again, uh, really like these hooks, very strong, uh, good hooking. And Trocar, Eagle Claws, very good hooks again, um, very very sharp. Um, but um, I'll show you how I do it with the, one of these today. So you need a few bits, a few components to go through, so your hooks, boom material, uh, I use Boom from Corda because I find it the best one. You can use uh, other materials, um, but uh, this one I use, I find it best. Some dark matter putty, could be any kind of tungsten heavy putty, uh, just to weigh, weigh the pop up down. Uh, some crimping materials to go with the boom. 
some scissors and the smaller components are a little spinner swivel a bait screw a hook bead these are ESP hook beads I find they are the best hook beads they do not move on the casting no matter how far you are chucking your uh, your lead and your hook um, and also a kicker you can also use shrink tube uh, with the kickers I tend to cut a very small amount off which you'll see in a minute first things first let's do the boom so I usually take off around about 12 inches something like that just to start me off put that to one side so they need the two crimps one for either end now once you do this that to one side this boom will last you ages you can use reuse the boom over and over again um, and just change your hook um, the bits that you will probably need to replace are the hook yeah, once you've caught a couple of fish a hook the definitely the hook bead possibly the kicker but all the other components you can reuse but hook hook bead definitely replace possibly the kicker so first of all just make a loop and this loop will be the one that attaches it to your leader okay so thread it through one side of the barrel the double barrel on the crimp and i do this i thread that bit through so it just pokes out a tiny bit and then i pull the long part down and i like to have a, a small loop like that at both ends and once i've done that these are the small crimps it's 0.6 mil and this is the 25 pound boom so it uh, goes with the small crimps so you use the small hole on here I'm sure you've all seen the Adi Hamidi one where he tells you what to use you put the barrel into there making sure it's all completely flush then squeeze it closed that's one bit done now at the other end thread it through one side of the barrel of the crimp now I try to do this so I get it the length I want it now normally I want it around about seven inches something like that just roughly I'm not one of these that measures everything so around about seven inches I like and then hold that in place put your swivel spin a swivel on he says spin a swivel on there we go and then put the other end through the crimp Pretty. Now I like to have a small, again, a small loop at that end. Not too big, but just so the swivel can move around a little bit. Oh, one of the neighbour's dogs wants to join in. Hopefully mine won't. And once again, get that in the small groove and give it a good squeeze. Go and should have yourself a little boom section with the tag end and cut the tag end off like that. That's one side. Okay. Now I use the puller tool on the swivel end and the other puller tool from Calder just so it opens up that a little bit. And you give that a good stretch. And in this sunshine, be nice, nice and warm, not too brittle. And 
There we go. That is your boom section. Now, to complete the rig, you want to get the hook out. I'm using size fours of the crank Kamakuras. You can use size six wide gapes, size two curve shanks, whatever you want to use. They all pretty much uh, do the same job. It's all personal preference in my opinion. Now, first thing I'm going to do is cut a very small amount off of this. There we go. You want to leave it's just enough from the curve to cover up that. That's all you need to do. So, put this on the hook. And you thread the hook through a wide bit first. So it comes all the way through. And then, now, I've seen people do this different ways. I don't know which uh, which way you're supposed to do it, but I always think that that bit is a catching problem, so I like to put that away from the hook point. Then you just pull your kicker down over your eye and over the top of the swivel. Just work it down. So it looks like that nice big curve in it. You put on the bait screw. Now I like to use the ones with a, a round ring. You can get oval ones as well, but I find uh, these ones are perfect for what I use them for. And last but not least, put on bead once you get the point through you're pretty safe so that goes on and I this is all very personal preference again I like to uh, take it all around so that is opposite the bar That is a completed Ronnie rig, which with a pop up will sit like this, oh, like that, however you want to do it. A nice little bit of movement, but it will spin no problem at all. The last thing you do, last couple of things you do, sorry, put a bit of putty. Now, you will probably get used to how much, but it doesn't need to be very much you've already got quite a bit of metal here to hold the pop-up down but a nice little bit of putty it's nice and warm today so it doesn't need too much playing to get it oh, sticky then I put that around the crimp it's all nice and neat yeah. you can hold the hook so the swivel does the job just mold that a little bit there we go and there we'll sit on the bottom like that until a nice big carp comes along and goes well okay the second rig I wanted to show you what I use for float fishing or surface fishing rather um, now this is the hook link I'm using currently 12 pound fox zig and floater hook link um, also use this as my main line 15 and 12 pounds depending on where I am and what fish I'm fishing for. Usually I use between somewhere between two and three foot 
I think, but um, I won't need all that today. So let's cut the lymph off so I can see that. Okay, now I usually use a wide gape for my for my surface fishing. Uh, and usually the trocar ones. They are so so sharp. And because you're not leaving them in the water for like hours and hours I feel that the exposed hook tip which is surgical sharp doesn't go rusty you can always put a bit of Vaseline on it just to protect it but that is one of the sharpest hooks on the market that I can I can find but I use a Grinner to tie these hooks on. Five turn grinner, and I prefer that to the blood knot. So, um, two, three, four, five. Pull the knot up slightly, wet it, then using the hook link, pull it down tight, and then using your teeth, tighten the knot, and then tighten it down again. Then that should be nice and tight, not going anywhere. Now I know what you were thinking, if you use a grinner, not going to get it to kick off at the right angle but I do put two different things on my surface fishing um, uh, hook link that makes the difference now I'll show you what I put on the actual hook so I use a slightly different bait screw than I do with the spinner rig and I find these plastic ones a little bit lighter you're not casting quite as far normally uh, with a surface bait um, so and the lighter ones just help it float a bit and this is probably very different to any other float setup you have used usually glue stuff onto the hook or put your hook through if I'm using bread uh, I hopped for the Nash bread bomb I think these are fantastic absolutely brilliant but this is what I use when I'm using dog biscuits and I use a, a pop-up and cut it down to match the dog biscuits so once that's on again ESP hook bead that goes this is Nash hook kicker and these just go up the line and onto the eye of the hook and I just find it just keeps that the hook link straight onto the eye and the colour of them I think helps disguise the hook so that's it that's what you want like that so that goes all the way along so once again you'll have two or three feet of this depending on what you're comfortable casting I don't think you need any more than three foot especially if you're using what I use so this will go onto here um, and this is a, a Fox bolt bubble now obviously Corder has got their own ones out um, which have the long stem on them you know if you prefer that they do cast really well Nash have got similar ones out and Fox I think have got similar ones to that out as well as this but this is what I prefer to use the large you can get extra large as well but um, the large ones I think you can cast these miles and you can also use them in close you know they're full of, half full of water or fill them almost all the way up and just have a little bubble of air there and they float lovely now this is the other way around, so 
you have the ring swivel there and your hook link goes onto the ring swivel and then the anti-tangle sleeve goes through a small hole that I've cut in this twig and that camouflages everything you pull it up tight that camouflages everything except the hook so you imagine a carp has got this on the surface that would just look like a twig floating past as normal you can't cast as far with that obviously but very very good for camouflage oh i hope that helps everyone um up next you'll see a few few fish that i've caught on both of these two different techniques um i'll chuck in a couple of stills of uh of some excellent fish i caught on my running rigs last year and uh let me know what you think cheers
16.
Okay guys, that's the end of the video. Uh, please like, share and subscribe and uh, come back again for the next one. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to put one up soon. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you enjoyed the stills. Uh, the last picture was uh, my PB um, from Talats in France and it was £71. Thanks a lot. Bye.